waiting for for the topic to show show on your, on our screens. I can uh, introduce myself maybe a bit more. Mm, I feel Panopticon is slightly less known as than Google, so you might need one sentence of explanation of what we do and who we are. So we are a Polish um, NGO working on human rights, but in a very specific area, which is modern surveillance. On a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, what we do uh, essentially is to work with uh, policymakers, trying to influence and change laws, either here in Poland or Bra in Brussels on the EU level. Uh, and we work with people more directly, trying to raise awareness about surveillance, uh, educate uh, and do some uh, work with tools, simply showing people how they can secure their privacy <coughs> uh, online uh, a bit better. Mm, we are also part of a coalition of 30 uh, organizations uh, in Europe doing more or less the same work, which is called European Digital Rights. I'm vice president of that coalition, so if you want to learn more about it or how to join it, please uh, let me know uh, afterwards. So today I will take you through a one very small piece of the work we do here in Poland, which is uh, our recent struggle for transparency. Uh, in the area where the law enforcement meets the internet, or to be more specific, um, in the area of requests that are sent by uh, public authorities to private companies for our data uh, about what we do uh, online. I hope that that issue will become a bit more clear. All right. uh, when I show you that slide, um, I hope it rings the bell to everybody here. Uh, obviously, Snowden revelations were a very important context of our work here in Poland. Mm, we have known for a while that there is something like FISA, uh, American law that uh, ma mandates big companies to cooperate uh, with secret services and reveal data about us. Uh, so that's what we have known before, but we have not been aware of the scale and the depth of, the sur of that surveillance. We didn't know that basically everybody can be a target because it's not so much about counterterrorism, uh, but more about US uh, foreign policy and that all major companies basically have to be somehow involved. Uh, so that was the major context for, for, for the work that I will tell you uh, about um, in a minute. Uh, which is not to say that we have thought of that issue only in, uh, in July or June last year. Um, in Poland, Poland belongs to, EU, uh, to the EU, and everybody who is more familiar with EU, I hope, ha ha has heard about data retention. So the European law that mandates all telecommunication companies to store our telecommunication data for a while, between six months and two years, just for law enforcement purposes. It's a major issue here in Europe uh, and also in Poland. So we've been working on that one for at least four years uh, so far. And we have found a lot of issues to be solved by changing European legislation. So that's been our struggle so far. Last year, we thought that this is a very high time to look at the internet as well. So go beyond the telecoms bubble and look um, at how the surveillance issue and the access to data works online, where there is no law on data retention, but where requests for data do happen. And they will happen more and more because our lives move to the internet, uh, well, increasingly. So, what questions we ask for ourselves when it comes to online data and access to this data by state authorities? Uh, we want to know who sends the request. Do we have a similar issue that we have seen through Snowden revelations in the US? Is it mostly secret services or is it more law enforcement? Mm. Then we wanted to know how the companies deal with these requests. So what are the procedures? What is the due process? How, how our rights as citizens and customers are uh, protected? Um, we also wanted to know what is the number of these requests. But at the same time, we were sure that the numbers are not the key issue. Because the numbers without the context, they really mean nothing. If you look at the number and you see 1,000, but not really understanding what was the context of the requests, it's very difficult to say whether it was a lot or, or not a lot. Um, then the more important things that we thought of were uh, the scope of um, the scope of requests and the purposes. What purpose do they serve? Is it, again, law enforcement or is it something more tricky like, like intelligence involving Polish citizens? And finally, do we have the right to know about the numbers? Do we have the right to know about the scope, purposes on all, and all other modalities that I've been talking about? Uh, so, um, 
we were lucky and we got uh, four big companies from Poland to cooperate with us on that project. We convinced four of uh, the companies that, uh, that offer very um, popular internet services um, to show us their numbers and to talk to us in depth about how they deal with this request, what type of requests they receive and what the problems uh, they see. We anonymize these companies because we thought that it's not uh, about naming, shaming or praising anybody. It's more about digging into issues and looking at problems. So what you see here is basically rough numbers showing 18 months history of requests and showing one thing that these requests are increasing in numbers. And that's all that we know, that the numbers increase and that's basically the major uh, conclusion from, from, from that part of the research. But more interesting thing that we saw was big differences in how the companies react to requests. So how, what kind of disclosures, uh, disclosures they, they, they do. Uh, and we found out that, well, the reactions are strikingly different. For some companies, almost all requests have to be fulfilled, while others see, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, on that far corner and they fulfill not even 20% of the requests. That's a big difference in standards, a big difference in fact in uh, legal protection for us being customers, clients, users of the services. Uh, what we came up with, the conclusion, was that it's not about uh, these companies, it's about the law that does not precisely uh, define what requests have to be fulfilled and when, when the request really has to be fulfilled. It's about formalities that the law enforcement has to go through and the differences in treatment of these formalities. But it's a major issue for citizens, that's why we, we draw your attention to this particular uh, part of that research. Mm. Then I will take you quickly to uh, another modality, which is who has been asking. Uh, we asked the companies who has been asking, and uh, the majority said that, well, almost 60, more than 60% of requests has been sent by the prosecution, which is basically the law enforcement, which is something we want to see, assuming that law enforcement works for us and is all about crime uh, prevention and crime investigation. So the prosecution was the, bigger, the biggest uh, um, entity requesting in numbers. Second was police, 30%, and the secret services. All, all of them were, well, not even 3%. 2.3%. Uh, so if you compare that to the numbers we have from the Prism affair from, from abroad, that gives you quite a bright picture, I would say, for what we can expect in Poland. Of course, it's a small research uh, covering only part of the market, but to make it more interesting, we also ask the other side. So we ask the, uh, the, the state authorities um, about the numbers of requests they send to internet companies. And it kind of confirms our, our, our concept of who is asking most because, uh, surprisingly, we received answers from almost all secret services. The biggest number here, the top one, Internal Security Agency, is something like Polish NSA. And you see that the number, at least the number they claim, it's pretty small. It's not even 2,000 requests per 18 months. Uh, what we haven't got was the data from courts, prosecutors, and police. So the biggest uh, entities requesting and that's the biggest question mark. We are still digging into this data and I already know that we will uh, get more data also from the ones who refuse data at that point. Uh, we are all already receiving these numbers so we will be publishing more, more of that kind of research uh, soon. Mm. Okay, coming to conclusions uh, and looking at the problems that we identified and we thought they are worth digging more into. I spoke about three of them. I will only draw your attention to three issues here. Uh, first, uh, I mentioned before, the law is not precise enough. The law gives uh, far too much scope for interpretation for the companies, which is not good for them either because they have to uh, basically employ a lot of lawyers and uh, a lot of people to think how to deal with that uh, interpretative doubts. It would be much better if the law was precise and if the law uh, gave all the answers, also minimizing these discrepancies that we saw uh, before and ensuring the same standard for the companies here in Poland, no matter where they are based, whether they, whether they are based in the US or in Warsaw, but they offer services on this market. So we need to make the law more precise. Uh, second thing, we need more oversight. This is definitely something that we are, uh, we are um, lacking in Poland, no matter which area of surveillance you go to, you 
don't really see enough mechanisms of independent oversight. Uh, we've been fighting for that for years. And uh, yesterday, you might have heard about the important, um, important resolution of European Parliament uh, on PRISM. It was a final resolution after six months of investigation into PRISM. And one of the recommendations precisely for Poland, because of also our uh, hearings that we gave in Strasbourg, the Parliament said that Poland should increase oversight um, in the area of secret services. So we hope it will be the, the, the final, so to say, stepping stone for us to, to get there, because that's what we are working on right now. Uh, and one, one interesting thing, the last point on, on, on that slide, uh, we also found a loophole that enables private entities, like uh, the entities uh, representing um, creative industry, uh, audiovisual industry in Poland, uh, to abuse criminal procedures just to get users' data from online companies. How does it work? Simply, a company or a lawyer of the company goes to police, they claim that there was uh, abuse related to intellectual property, police makes investigation, they get data of alleged um, infringers, like people simply using internet, and then that data is used by the lawyers of that private entity to send letters threatening with fines and, and court cases uh, unless internet users will pay money for that. So that's something quite uh, troubling and we made sure that this is communicated to authorities and probably will be solved uh, soon. So this is one of our fights. Uh, more to come on our website. The report, uh, you have seen just pieces of it. A full report in English will be available soon, this month. If you want to contact us about that or any other surveillance-related issues, here is our Twitter and our website. I will happily deliver that material to you directly and talk to you later. And tomorrow there will be more discussion about surveillance on the panel. So I invite you to come. Thanks. <laughs>